They're here again. Oh, it's these wankers here again, trying to get me to do a show on how to make money in real estate when I'm actually too busy making money every single day, doing hundreds of deals on a yearly basis, making millions and millions of dollars. But I'll tell you this guys, I will take you for a walkabout. One time only, one deal, I'm gonna show you what it's like to be in the life of the real estate industry. Look, I don't have time for games. Let's get to this house as quickly as we can because I want to check it out. So we're just on our way to a property that was bought by a first time flipper. So the deal is that they've got no money for the renovation. They've bought the property. They've seen me. They know my success. If we can help them make a little bit of money in return, I make a return on my investment. I think we could potentially turn this into a win-win type scenario. So we're going to go check it out see what these guys got themselves into and just see if we can help them. So it definitely looks like a quiet little neighborhood and I've already checked out the comparable sales so I know that um, there's potential to make quite a bit of profit in this area. Hopefully they did not overpay for that property but I do have a little bit of a gut instinct telling me that they probably did overpay just like a lot of other beginners do. They get excited and then they pay way too much than what they should. Oh wow. G'day guys, how are you going? Great. I'm Angelo. I'm nice to meet you. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Cool. So is this the first flip you've ever done? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I'm assuming that's the beauty, right? Mm, that's the beauty. That's the beauty. Oh wow. So what did you pay for that? Uh, 100,000. Hong Kong dollars? <laughs> no? American dollars. Yeah. Okay. And what are your expectations? How much are you looking to make? Well, I figured that we could clean up the outside a little bit. Um, we have to pass the hole in the roof, probably clean the carpets and yep. throw some paint on. So I checked the comps on the way here and I can tell you that you definitely overpaid. So I thought you had yourself a cracker deal, but you got yourself into a pretty bloody mess. In order to succeed, it takes hard work. I've been there, I've done that, I've flipped so many homes and nothing comes easy in life. You have to make sacrifices and you have to be willing to work hard. And it's very unfortunate that no one tells these things to these beginner investors. It's all fairy tales and butterflies, but the reality is you're probably gonna get stuck in a rut and you're gonna have to work extremely hard to get out of that rut. And it's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take three, five, 10 or 15 years to get to where you need to be. So you have to be prepared for the hard work and you definitely have to be prepared for all the sacrifices. So the only way to see what damage you guys have caused here is to go and check out the inside. So shall we? Yeah. Awesome. Why don't we just go around to the back door? But the front door's right here. The front door doesn't work though. There's something wrong with the handle. Okay, are you sure about that? Yeah, I've been trying to get it open for about a week. What? I'll tell you what guys, there is no better feeling out there than getting ready to go to a closing and pick up a fat check. And I mean a five or six figure check which is more than someone makes in a year. But to be completely honest with you, once you've achieved a certain level of success and once you've picked up a certain amount of those checks, it stops being about the money. It really does. There's, there's something bigger and better out there than just adding another zero to the bottom of your bank account. And in my opinion, it's about giving back. How can you give back to someone in need? There's a saying and it goes like this, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And the more you give, the more you will get. And I can tell you this guys, I've bought, renovated and sold over 500 properties. I've made huge profits on a lot of those deals, but giving a house away to someone in need and seeing that smile on their face 
that is truly unforgettable and it's something that I'll cherish forever and I'll probably take those memories with me and I'll look back when I'm on my deathbed with a big smile on my face because I know that I touched someone in need and I probably changed their life for the better. Yeah, I've been trying to get it open for about a week. What? I guess it's working now. Come in. That's so we don't have to spend that much money on the AC, so just, you know, the breeze can kind of go throughout the entire property. It's like the Bahamas. It's an open plan type arrangement. Right, guys? Yep. yep. There is one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, especially since you guys are beginners and you haven't done any flip, this is your first one. The next flip that you guys do, you should only be buying a property that needs a cosmetic rehab. So you've made the mistake of buying this one which needs a complete blown overhaul. What I want you to do next time is truly buy a house that just needs new carpet, paint, and patching up a few holes, okay? So I don't think you guys are aware of what you got yourself into here, but this property is an absolute disaster and it's gonna need a lot more hard yakka than what you guys initially anticipated. I've made my decision, I wanna go back to my car and I'm gonna give you my offer. So how bad do you guys want this deal? Pretty bad. Yeah? Yeah. Well look, the best I'm willing to do is a 70-30 split, so I want 70% of all of the profits. Guys, the property is a disaster, it needs a lot of work, and that's the best I can do. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. Yeah. Yeah? All right, I'll have you sign right on the spot here. You too, mate. I appreciate your business. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early. I'll bring my crew. We'll hammer it out. Thank you. Have a great day. So we just checked out the house, guys, and it's an absolute bloody nightmare. Now, it's also pretty evident as to who wears the pants in that relationship. Now, she definitely got them into a pickle with that house. Now, for all of you beginners out there, you have to keep these three things in mind when buying a house. The first one is you have to buy cheap. You make money when you buy a house, not when you sell it. The second one is please inspect the property before purchasing it. I mean, never buy sight unseen. And the third one is only buy a property that needs a cosmetic rehab. That property needs way too much work, guys. So those two cheeky buggers have failed on all three points. Now, they're desperate. That's why they took my offer. I stand to make 70% of the net profits. I'll do that deal any day of the week, okay? So look, let's go home, let's take a rest, and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. We've got a big day, and I'm hoping to make money on this deal. You ready, kids? <laughs> All right, all right, all right. We're gonna give a house away today. When I initially started my journey as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, and in particularly a real estate investor, it was about me. It was about making money. It was about flipping deals and making as much profit as I could. Why? Because I was hungry. Like I literally was eating peanut butter for breakfast and drinking $1 gas station coffees. I couldn't survive. I needed to eat. I wanted to help my family. And then I achieved a certain level of success where money was not a, not a problem anymore. We had enough money to last a lifetime. And then the true entrepreneurial spirit took over and it stopped being about me. It stopped being about money. It started being about something bigger and better than money and myself. And that bigger and better thing is giving back, giving back to others in need. No more crying. There are so many people out there that don't have a roof over their head, that have fallen on hard times, that are, that are sick and they can't get better. And the only way that they can get better is by other people helping them out and giving back to them. Come on fam.
One of my absolutely favorite things to do, and just to make sure that my boys are on their toes and working their hardest, I like to surprise them with one of my mates. Crikey! All right, mate, so listen here. We're gonna go inside. I need to make sure that the guys are on their toes. Give them the odd little hiss here and there, but that's it. You got it? Hey, Stacy, I found my mate in the backyard. He wanted to say hello. You crazy man, get that thing out of here! Found him in the backyard, mate. He wanted to say hello. You saw, you saw. Come on, mate. You just give him a little kiss. Just kiss him on the forehead. What? You don't want to kiss my snake. All right. All right. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Can you get back to work now, please? Why? This property is an absolute nightmare. I mean, we had to get Aladdin to fly in on his magic tarp to cover the bloody roof because there's so many holes and the water just seeping through. It's um, damaging the entire property. The windows are also shot, so, so we're gonna have to replace them. And the demo has already started. As you can tell, we've got all of those shingles there on the floor. And to be honest with you guys, I don't think I've ever seen a garden growing in the gutters of a property. So that has to be removed immediately before we start seeing some bright red tomatoes growing out of all of those vines. I mean, this property is an absolute joke. So we started demo. The guys have done a great job of tearing off all of those shingles. So there's a lot of construction debris surrounding the property. Um, I'm not a big fan of this because it's a trip hazard. So I definitely want to tell the guys to clean everything up, throw it in the dumpster. So we had to completely tear off the old roof because it was just unfixable. And um, as you can tell there, you know, we're revealing all of the rafters to see if any of them need replaced. If they need replaced, we're gonna replace them. We're gonna have new plywood going on top there, new shingles. And guys, to be honest with you, one of the most important aspects of a renovation is the roof. Because if you don't get the roof right, then all of the interior can be damaged um, by any leakage, right? So we have to make sure that the roof is done correctly. My God. This is just an absolute nightmare. I would not want to be that guy shoveling all of that crap right now, I'll tell you that. The floor is completely missing. I mean, there's no floor. Where's the floor? I mean, the floor's completely gone. Like, this is just incredible. I can't believe that um, someone could buy a property in such a bad condition. So if you take away anything from this episode, I want you to take away this. Real estate is not supposed to be sexy. It's not supposed to be pretty. It has to be profitable. So something that is very important before you start your rehab is you never want to overcapitalize on the rehab itself. You have to understand the demographic that the property is located in. And if the property is located in a higher end area, then you're gonna to have to use higher end finishes. Now, if it's located in a medium to lower socioeconomic area, then you do not need a golden toilet bowl and a granite countertop. Something very basic and durable is gonna be sufficient enough. I don't see any gold ones here. What about the Australian standard? What's wrong with the Australian standard? Right? There's nothing wrong with the Australian standard. Um, another thing that I like to do is I like to make everything very light and bright. So using light colors on the ceiling, the walls, even the, um, even the bathroom, the vanity, um, and the kitchen itself. The brighter it can be, the better. It just, it just gives it a nice contrast when you've got a, you know, a light and bright type property. So check out these cabinets, for example. You could spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a full-blown, custom-designed, over-the-top granite countertop kitchen. Or, whatever makes sense for you and your numbers, as long as you make a profit, do it. Now, a rule of thumb that I always use when rehabbing a house is this. Nothing sexy, nothing flash, very fundamental. But this splashback right here, now that is sexy. So in all honesty, guys, I do not like coming to a hardware store. Henry Ford had a great saying in the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. He said this, I'm smart enough to have smarter people around me doing the things that I can't do or don't want to do. So look, when you're first starting out, yes, you've got to come and look at toilets. And you're probably going to have to deal with tenants if you're a buy and hold investor. But over time, guys, that changes. As you start doing more deals and as you start building a team, teamwork makes the dream work. You will not have to do this anymore and you'll be able to get other people much more qualified than you and experts in construction to come and find and buy all of the materials where you can sit in the office, get on the phone and make deals happen just like I do. So I can see some pretty good progress being made to the property. It seems like all of the sheetrock has been installed and what's next is they have to mud the property throughout, give it a good sand and then the painters can come in and do their job. And what we instruct the painters to do is get in there, 
blast it white, make it light, make it bright, and get out because then we need to start installing the finishing touches like the kitchen, like the bathroom, like the light fittings, and the flooring. So a lot of the windows in these properties were shot. Well, not shot like someone shot them, but just broken if that makes sense. And what we had to do is we pretty much had to replace all of the windows. Um, there's really no point of just replacing one window if the glass is broken, especially in a property like this where all of the windows are a little bit older. So we just went in there, replaced all of the windows. It's just a proper way of doing a rehab and it's definitely gonna save you money in the long run, especially in a state like Ohio, where you know in the winter it gets really cold. If you do not have new windows, your heating bill is just gonna be very expensive because you know there's gonna be a lot of cold air coming through those old windows. G'day guys. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, I'm good. So I just got back from the title company's office. I've got some great news. I've got two checks with me, but before we reveal the profit, I want to recap the numbers again. So you guys paid $100,000 for the property, right? I put $40,000 of my money into the deal, and I'm glad to say that we successfully sold the property for $199,000, and we made a total net profit after closing costs of $50,000. So as you know, before we started the deal, we agreed on a 70-30 split, meaning you guys would make 30% of the profits, and I would be making 70% of the profits. So I'm hoping that your bloody math skills are up to par, but how about you tell me how much you think you've made? Well, I think on 50000 that we would like to walk away with at least 15000 Okay. Really? Is that it? Yeah. How does that look? Whoa. 25000 That's a lot more than 30%. So lesson number one, always read before you sign. And if you read the bloody contract, you would have seen that it was a 50-50 split from the start. I just wanted to see how bad you guys wanted the deal. So this is really ours? That's really yours. So guys, congratulations. Go and celebrate. Have a few pina coladas on the dingo. Thank you. And we might be able to do some business together in the future. Good evening. We start tonight with a story and a family we've been following and their happy ending. A local company is taking the giving season literally. List and Sal Realty is gearing up to give away a home to a family in need. And get this no strings attached. A list and sell invested tens of thousands of dollars in this Toledo home. We're giving this house away, no strings attached. Congratulations, mate. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> You're the winner of the house, oh, mate. Congratulations. <laughs> Angelo says he knew right away they would continue the tradition. Their goal, to give away 100 homes. The more we give as a business, the more we tend to get back, and we don't even know how it comes back, but it just keeps coming back. Last year was unforgettable. This year will be unforgettable. And uh, my mom's here today. And I'm very, very fortunate. Congratulations. <laughs> I know what it must feel like for you, mate. You know what I mean? To lose your mom. So um, with that being said, we're going to do this every year. I'm doing it next year. I've got a goal and I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it here. We want to give out 100 houses in the next 10 years. 100 houses. How are we going to do that? I've got no clue. But when we... That's 10 houses a year, mate. So we probably won't be able to do 10 next year, but we're going to start off with one, and then we'll see how many we can do. And I'm, I'm going to put a goal of doing 100 over the next 10 years. Um, and I, one of my favorite quotes, mate, is success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure, right? So all of the money in the world, all of the wealth means nothing if you don't feel fulfilled, right? And you can feel fulfilled in many different ways. You can feel fulfilled by love, you can feel fulfilled by happiness, you can feel fulfilled by giving. I know what's in my heart and what's in my soul. And what you said yesterday, you know, um, these people that, that do things like this, they're God's people. They do it in His name, they do it for Him. I can tell you right now, mate, yes, that's the truth. That's the truth. I know that He's guiding me and He's pointing me in the right direction. He's telling me what to do and how to do it. And I, I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't religious, that don't believe in God, fair enough, whatever. Um, yeah, mate, the best, this is the best thing I have ever done and my team has ever done. Um, and I think that that just speaks volumes of who we are and, and, and what, we, what we do and what we want to do. Um, yes, we want to succeed in business. Yes, we want to be a profitable company. Yes, we want to, you know, do great, but we also want to give back. Yeah. So we're starting off with this house. 
and then we'll see how far we can take it over the next next year and over the next 10 years. And um, so there you go, mate. Same I just want to say thank you to everyone that contributed to this. Me and my family are very humble and very appreciative. I want to thank you guys so much because it means a lot, lot to us. It's a very big blessing and a good thing that we had to look forward to because of the holidays, hard times, our mom not here for Thanksgiving or Christmas, first holidays ever without my mom. So thank you so much from the heart. Thank you. So guys, I have bought, renovated, and sold over 500 properties. I have made millions and millions of dollars. But I'll tell you this, I do not remember any single one of those deals. The only properties that I remember are the houses that I gave away to people in need. Every single property that I've bought, renovated and sold and made a huge profit on. I mean, it's great, don't get me wrong, making that profit is awesome, but it's not fulfillment. You do not get fulfillment from making more money and adding another zero to the bank account. You truly get fulfillment from helping someone in need. Seeing a smile on their face and knowing that it's gonna change their life for the better, that is something that I get to cherish forever. And I will take those memories with me while I'm on my deathbed and I'll look back and think to myself, wow, I really did something great and I gave back and I helped out those in need. So what I want written on my tombstone is this, Angela Ramora, he gave it his all and gave it all away.